Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at importing Photoshop documents into Final Cut Pro 10. Now one thing to bear in mind really quickly is just to check which version of Final Cut Pro you're running. You can do that by clicking on Final Cut Pro in the uh, menu bar and choosing About Final Cut Pro and that will tell you what version you're running. You can see here we're running 10.0.6. Now, the reason it's important to note this is that in the first version, there wasn't complete support for Final, uh, for Photoshop documents, which is what we're going to be taking a look at today. Now, in this current version of Photoshop and some of the previous versions, Photoshop documents are now fully supported. Now, what this means is that it will accept Photoshop documents as layered files and will actually allow you to expand the Photoshop document and look at and manipulate the different layers and even go as far as to animate some of the layers as well. So if we just go ahead and import a Photoshop document, we're going to go into Finder here. And we've got a, a, um, a Photoshop document that we're going to put into this Resident Evil project. I work as an editor for a zombie horror themed production company called Silent Studios. And we were contracted by Capcom to produce the UK Resident Evil 6 trailer. Uh, so this is the project that I'm working on here. And we're just going to go ahead and drag this into the timeline. <coughs> this will also add it into the uh, event manager. You can see that in here we've got our document and it's also got a standard duration. You can change the duration of how of the images if you go into preferences. You can go into editing and you can choose the duration of still images um, when they're imported. Now, if we drag this over accordingly and put it on top of our actress talking, you can see that it looks a bit dead, it's, it, it's lacking the colour. If we just select this file and press the V button, you can see this is what the actual Photoshop document looks like. You can see we've got plenty of colour, we've got a yellow here, and then the rest is grey, there's CPMs in red, and then there's a live button up there. Now the actual placement of the live button in this Photoshop document is down here, um, but we can go ahead and move it anyhow. Uh, but the bottom line is you can see the breaking news is now a grey colour, and that is because the colour was created using layer styles. If we hop over to Photoshop, you can see this is the original document. You can see that if we take a look at some of these effects, all these different layers, a lot of them are created by the layer styles. You can see here is the breaking news folder, and we can turn that on or off. If we expand this folder, you can see that there is a rounded rectangles object, and that is what has the color. If we click on here and choose the um, gradient overlay, you can see we've got a yellow gradient on top, and that's what give it, is giving it its color. But if I a pro, it won't recognize the layer style because it's not a compatible uh, piece of file information. So that's one of the main limitations. If we double click in this though, you can see that we've got access to all the individual layers. We don't have all the sub layers, but you can see that the layers that were disabled in the project, i.e. had the eye turned off, like this layer here, they are greyed out here. You can put them back in by pressing V, but for the most part they are all turned off accordingly. Now, one of the advantages um, of having Photoshop documents is the fact that if we could take an individual element like this element here, which is this CPM logo down here in the corner, if we choose on the transform buttons and we choose add a keyframe, we scroll to the end, we add another keyframe and then we move it, and then press done. If we then go back to our main project, you can see that we've got an animation created. We couldn't have done this if we just used a PNG unless we were to cut up the image individually, but you don't get the same level of control because you can only cut up images in squares and rectangles um, using the crop tools. So as you can see, there are advantages to be gained from using Photoshop documents, but beware of the limitations. The way to get around this is to bake in the effects. If we were to right click on our rounded rectangle tool and choose rasterize layer 
and raster as layer style. That has turned it into a solid object in which the color is baked into that image. If we save this, hop back over to Final Cut, and then we can grab version 2 and put that into our comp. And you can see now we've got our color back. And then we can still add in the effects, and we've also bared in mind the limitations of the Final Cut Pro 10 assistant. Remember to check out Silent Studios, who I work for as an editor. Uh, you can check out the link in the description, which will take you to their website. And remember to also subscribe to their YouTube channel, where you can see awesome content like this. So hopefully this tutorial was useful. Um, now you can start using Photoshop documents to add um, more depth to your images uh, that you're going to be manipulating inside of Final Cut Pro 10, um, whilst also bearing in mind the drawbacks. So hopefully this was useful, and I'll see you guys soon in a brand new tutorial. Also remember to subscribe and also request tutorials in the dialog box below. Also want to apologise for such a long delay between this video and previous videos. I've been incredibly busy um, being involved in work such as this. So hopefully tutorials will be back up and running very smoothly and you'll be pleased to know that I've already got some motion tutorials in production.